All right, welcome back, everybody. Let's jump right in. So I will return to our note controller from the previous episode. And yeah, here's where we left off. Uh, so I want to point your attention to all of this junk here. All of this is responsible for uh, fetching a note from the database and authorizing it. So why don't we see if there are small little tweaks and refactors that we might use to clean this up a bit? Because remember, this is what 80% of programming is. You, you get the first draft on paper, so to speak, and then you go over it again and again and again, uh, making microscopic improvements that really do add up at the end of the day. Okay, so the first thing I see is this. If not note, then abort. Okay. I wonder if there's a way that we could combine these. Like, it wouldn't it be cool if there was a way to say uh, fetch or abort, and then it would just do that automatically for me. Think about it. If, if, if I had that method, if that method was available to me, I would no longer have to write this. And in fact, across the entire code base, I would no longer have to write logic like this. I would simply use uh, a helper method like that. But the problem is, well, this fetch method I don't own. Uh, that's something that PHP provides internally. I think it's actually a PDO statement class. In fact, let's just play around. Let's die and dump the note to see what we have here. So I'll come back, give it a refresh, click on a note. And yeah, we see we have an instance of a PDO statement class that I don't own. But yeah, it, it, it's true though. There will be situations where you wish you did own it so that you could add things, so you could stack things like this. So, hmm, is there a way that we can allow for this? And the answer is absolutely. There's a number of options that we might consider. So let's take a look. Right now we know that this query method is returning that PDO statement object that we reviewed in the browser, okay? But what if it didn't? Let's click through. And yeah, that's where we return the PDO statement. But again, what if it didn't? Hmm. Well, if it didn't, maybe I could either wrap it inside of another object or simply extend the, the API of this database class to offer some additional helper methods. All right, come along for the ride and see what you think. If I'm no longer returning the statements, well, I could just return the object itself, the instance. And we can do that by saying return this. Okay, so now when I call query, I'm not returning that PDO statement, I'm returning the same instance of database. So in fact, right now, everything's gonna blow up, of course, because now we're trying to call fetch on a database class and it doesn't exist. So yeah, if we come back to Firefox and refresh, of course, we get a fatal error and we'd expect that. There is no fetch method on the database class. Okay, so you know what? Let's do baby steps here. Why don't we start by adding a fetch method? So I will switch back scroll down and we'll add it here, fetch. And yeah, this is basically going to do uh, what we had earlier where we'd have something like statement fetch. But now the problem is this statement object, I don't have access to it. It's outside of the scope of this method. And instead it's inside of query, right? Here's our statement and I wanna access it from this method, but I can't do that. So it sounds like, hmm, uh, there's a couple ways we could do this, but it sounds like why don't we assign the PDO statement to this object uh, as an instance property like this? This statement equals connection prepare. And then I can update this like so. And then finally, I will declare it at the top. Now, don't forget, at the moment, we are making all class properties or object properties uh, public because we haven't yet reviewed visibility or types or any of that stuff. But yeah, again, in, in real life, this would probably be uh, protected or private, but for now, public is fine. Okay, cool. So now that we've effectively assigned the PDO statement to the object, I can grab it from, from any method that needs to access it like this. So I'm gonna say return this statement fetch. And if we did everything correctly, it all should just work. Come back to Firefox, give it a refresh, and there we go, we're in business. But now the key difference here, and this is an important one, the key difference is that I now own this fetch method, which means if I don't wanna call it fetch uh, as an example, I don't have to. And in fact, I think fetch is an ideal. If I just wanna grab a record, if I want to find a record, uh, well, why don't I just use a method like find? Well, now I have that ability because again, I own this method. Okay, so now if I come back to note, you'll see 
um, by, by making this refactor, or again, we could have wrapped up the PDO statement within our own class and our own object that would have done the same thing. But either way, we have regained control, so to speak. We're not just using somebody else's API. We've wrapped it up in something that we own. So again, this is a little higher level, maybe a little more confusing, but these are really important concepts that you'll reach for throughout your whole career. Okay, so now we've swapped it over to find. Everything still works, and this is looking great. So the next step is to add a method to handle this. And remember at the beginning of the video, I said uh, it might be nice if there was a method called fetch or abort, or find or abort, or find or fail, eh, whatever you want. Again, this is the creative aspect of programming. You get to name it whatever you want. So in our case, why don't we call it find or fail? Okay, and that would ideally, if we do it right, that would allow us to remove all of this here and everything would still work just like it did before. All right, well, let's do it. Back to our database class. We now have a finds method, but I will add a second version, find or fail. And this is just going to say, all right, we'll try to find the record. So this is going to call that other method that we just created. But then we're gonna do a check here and we'll say, uh, remember, I can't just say note because it won't always be a note. It could be uh, a user, it could be a post, it could be something different. So we wanna keep this fairly generic like result. Then I could say, all right, well, if there's not a result uh, and we're just reproducing what we had in that note controller, then abort. But otherwise, if we do have a result, I can return it. And yeah, if we did everything correctly, this should just work. Let's give it a shot. We'll go into this note and yeah, let's now access a note that doesn't exist and we get a 404. It works exactly the way it did before, but now we've wrapped up this incredibly common logic that you can imagine needing to perform throughout your entire code base. So I think that's a pretty cool refactor. Let's come back to our note controller, and now it's a little more simple. All right, next let's move on to this section here. And again, sometimes it helps to take a step back and just ask yourself, well, what is this code doing? And if I were to explain it to you, I would say, oh, this, this code authorizes that the current user uh, created the given note. Uh, but notice uh, that keyword authorize doesn't exist here, but maybe it should. So in that case, mm, maybe we could add a helper function called authorize. Let's try it out. If we, and this doesn't exist right now, but if we had a function called authorize, what would we do? Well, maybe we could take the condition and pass it through and that would just do it. You know, again, wouldn't it be cool if that was a thing? And if it's not a thing, make it a thing like this. We'll go into functions.php. We're gonna add a new one here, authorize. This will accept some kind of condition or really a Boolean. And then I could say, uh, well, if the condition fails, so if not condition or, or falsy, uh, then we will abort with a 403 uh, if you wish. So response forbidden. And I think that should do it. And actually on this note, it might be useful and flexible if we extended this. For example, what if we added a second parameter to allow the user to override the default status code? And right now the default is response uh, forbidden. So then we could substitute it here. But yeah, notice now if the user wants or if we want, we could pass a, uh, a custom status code that we want to use. But now you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, if we're performing authorization, then isn't 403 always the proper status code? And the answer is, well, yes and no. Uh, maybe technically yes, but there will be situations where even though the user may not be authorized to view a particular page or a resource, you don't necessarily want to indicate that to them because that provides that provides information about the state of the database. Maybe that's a way to look at it. It gives them information that, oh, that record does in fact exist. So maybe I could do something malicious knowing that. Uh, another example, we're going on a tangent here, but 30 seconds. Another example might be um, if you need to reset your password and you type in an email address, you submit the form, you've done this before, right? And then it returns and tells you, we couldn't find a user with that email address. Uh, and plenty of sites do this. Uh, but if you think about it, it, it is, and in fact, Laracast might do this, but if you think about it, <laughs> if you think about this, it does reveal information about the database because now you have a way to check if a given user 
exists or if a given email address exists in the database. So notice you're revealing information that you may not want to in certain situations. Okay, so that was a long way to say it could be useful to uh, allow ourselves or our future selves to override the default status code. Okay, anyways, let's come back. And yeah, I think this is actually looking pretty good. So back to Firefox, here's a record that doesn't exist. Here's a record that we didn't create. And oh, actually I expected that to work. We didn't create this note, but we could still see it. So again, notice these are the things you have to deal with all the time. And this is where in the future you'll learn about uh, testing automated ways to confirm that you didn't screw up uh, as I did here. So anyways, if I come back to our note controller, I wanna authorize that the notes user ID equals the current user. And that'll solve the problem as you see there. Finally, if we view a note that we did create, everything works the way we'd expect. Okay, so let's wrap up by updating. And does this fail? Yeah, it does. So because we made those tweaks to the database class, we're gonna have to update our notes controller to no longer call a fetch all method. All right, let's go to notes. And yeah, db query. And do we wanna keep this method? Do we like that, fetch all? Or do we want it to be something different? Like maybe you just want it to be called all or maybe you want it to be called get. So here's my query and get me the results. Keep it simple whenever you can. So with that in mind, we're gonna stick with get. Come back to database. Here is our method called get. And again, this is just going to say return this statement fetch all. And again, notice that I now own that method name. Come back, refresh, and that works as well. So I think this is a pretty cool refactor. So you know what, I get it. We've been sort of in the woods uh, the last couple episodes as we talk about uh, some nitty gritty details and refactoring. Maybe that's not fun to you. Actually, it's super fun to me, but I get it. it. It's nothing flashy that we can see on the page. So in the next episode, we will fix that by finally reviewing forms and how we can allow our users to create brand new notes that are persisted in the database. I'll see you then.